and hello welcome back so yeah I today I'm going to continue where I left off basically we have just uh, known how to um, extract all the data's data relevant data from you know this finding pick function okay now um, now that we have all the now that we have so-called all the index numbers of the peaks that we want okay you can actually just play around with the tolerance you can play around with using uh, uh, decibels or non decibels it's really up to you okay now that we have all of this uh, we want to find our um, our uh, so-called what do you call that yeah man on my yeah we want we want to find um, we want to find our input and output right okay at, at each of the index number that we supply so we don't just apply one index number we may have multiple index numbers over here for example 21 and 19980 because there are two mirror there are two parts uh, of the they are basically the same peak but one is the mirror of the other in the Fourier um, transform spectrum thing yeah okay uh, so we want to search index number 21 and index number 19980 and I want to return all my uh, input peaks output peaks and of course the frequencies at each of these peaks so the way to do it is to use this element search okay to use this element search so it says find array uh, elements that meet a condition okay so what is this condition which I give it okay what is this condition Oh wow. Well, uh, okay. This this isn't uh, apparently. I think, uh, yeah, I made a mistake again. Oh, all right. Find array elements and meet a condition. This is a this is MATLAB's uh MATLAB's way of doing things. But for me, um, yeah, basically all of this is uh, um, I just use a for loop over here. Which isn't as sophisticated, but you know it works, right? So um, this element search here is my own custom custom uh, function here. What it takes in is the Fourier transform data and the input peak indices. What's this fast Fourier transform data? Fast Fourier transform data is this vector of input output or whatever you have. Okay, it's a one one row one column thing. Okay, it's only a. a one row and one anyway many rows and one column okay so it's a column vector uh, with many rows inside so input peak indices is basically this index number thing which uh, I just demonstrated to you okay so this is the fast forward transform data which is you know the peaks over here okay so uh, we want we want them in a running order okay that's why I use this uh, this uh, element search so that it will all the peaks and all the frequencies will be in running order because if you just use the, the peaks over here uh, they will I think sort it from uh, uh, ascending to descending or descending to ascending okay in terms of magnitude so everything will be jumbled up you cannot find your your um, yeah what I mean what I want is okay once I filter out what peaks are important what peaks are not so I have maybe the f the first frequency and then I want the y value of the first frequency all right if I were to use yeah if I were to use the this this function to find all my peaks they will probably be sorted from uh, ascending to descending or descending to ascending so that means all all my values here will be jumbled up so if f1 you have f1 f2 f3 and this is in uh, ascending uh, uh, ascending frequency so f1 is smaller than f2 and is f2 is smaller than f3 well you you might have depending on your peak height you might have y of f3 here y of f5 over here and everything will be jumbled up because you you kind of mess up your peaks so i don't want i don't want that and that's why i'm using this for loop here to kind of uh, 
identify for me you know based on the the index number of the peaks i want to find my fast forward transform data so this is basically just a for loop okay a for loop that okay first thing first i will find the length uh, of my indices okay i'll find uh i will I will find the length of my input peak indices meaning to say I only I only have two data points here right if I use this 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 thing to be my number of indexes number of peaks okay my number of peaks is here one and here it's two all right so one and two okay and what happens uh, after that okay I have my input peak indices and my fast forward transform data okay yeah so I, I, I want to print out, you know, I print out the, uh, I construct a column vector of zeros with n rows, okay, so I have two rows here and one column. So this is what I would call it the filtered FFT data. I did not spe specify what kind of data it is, it's just something I call filtered FFT data. It can be frequency data, complex gain data, whatever data you want, okay. So FFT data here can be the input uh, vector, the output vector, or even the frequency vector. So it will just do the index number search. Then it goes, it goes for this for loop. So it goes from i equals 1 to n. The peak index equals to the input peak indices, i1. So, if, uh, so it will be a for loop looping through all the index numbers that we supply. So the first peak index here will be 21. So it will it will take look at this number i1 okay at i equals 1 uh, you, will, you will return the number 21 i equals 2 you'll return the number 19980 so um, next thing I say is okay uh, filtered data at this uh, at this i1 equals to FFT data peak index 1 so what does it mean okay if your if your first index number is 21 okay I will go and search let's say I'll go and search this input I'll look for the index number 21 and then I'll return this number what and then what happens uh, when you return this number okay what happens when you return this number you'll put it into the filter FFT data which is this this uh, this zeros vector which I initialize and then I start loading all the values in there in the running order of the index numbers uh, so that's very important Okay, so uh, because you, you, I want all my peaks, uh, peak values to be in running num index numbers. Okay, so once this is done, it returns this uh, filtered FFT data for all the index numbers. I will get my complex gain, or I can get my frequency, depending on what, uh, what I put it in here. Okay, so this filtered FFT data will be returned into this workspace here. So for example, if I use this input peak index and now i want to say all right i want my input peaks so i i load the input data in there the the, the vector of complex numbers i supply the index number and then i will get uh input peaks i do the same with the output and i do the same with the frequencies okay from now what i'm really interested in is to find the complex gain okay which is the output peaks divided by the input peaks. Now I'll do it across every element. That's why I have this dot and forward slash. Okay, so um, so what what this whole thing will ultimately put out is um, my peak frequencies and complex gain. Okay, and I I use the same way of loading all of these variables into this peak data da peak data. Uh, data structure. So if you look at peak data over here, uh, my input peaks in dB, my output peaks, input peak frequency, output peak dB, output peak frequencies, and only based on the input peak, uh, input peaks, I will find the complex gain. Okay, so the input peaks here uh, again 0 0.0020 hertz, 1.9980 hertz, and my complex gain at these two points are. 0.9245 minus 0.2917i and then you have the, the complex conjugate of that okay that's why you have this mirror image yeah but uh, basically it's just complex conjugates nothing nothing too much there 
Okay, so that's that's how this this peak finder works. So based on the the uh, frequencies that you supply in the inputs at the input, it will find all the complex gain and return it as the output. Okay, of, of course, along with all the other interesting bits of data you might be interested in. So that's what this peak finder uh, script is doing for you. It will find the peaks first, and then it will. Uh, sort sort them out for you and put it into the various vectors so that you can perform your frequency response. Okay, so that's that's I think uh, just explaining how this code works. There's this uh, I use the find picks uh, thing and then also uh, I have my own custom function here. Okay, called element search. Okay, so I put the other function towards the end. Only later versions of MATLAB have this, I think from 2018, 2019 onwards. I can't remember which version it can start doing that. Uh, but 2021 definitely has this, in 2020 as well. Okay, so, so this, this is how this whole thing works. Alright. Yeah, so uh, again, you can use a different threshold or different input to find all the, the relevant peaks that you want and you sort of just eliminate all the noise okay uh, so that's that's that all right so thanks again for watching I will see you guys next time uh, so probably uh, yeah this this is basically uh, for each uh, frequency response test you are able to do some sort of uh, Fourier transforms uh, get all the peaks out and then get all the complex gains out this is the script that does that for you. Okay, thanks for watching. See you again. Bye-bye.